Welcome to the ultimate Solidity Smart Contract Web3 Blockchain Developer Course Foundry Edition. Previously, we've done two other massive courses and tutorials like this, one of them with JavaScript and one of them with Python, and then now one in pure Solidity. And combined, those two videos have over 5 million views, making them the most watched blockchain developer educational material on the planet. And we're looking to do it all over again. We've learned a ton from making those first two courses, and we've taken all of those learnings from those two courses, wrapped them up into this one to make this one the best one yet. If you're more interested in full stack development and working with JavaScript, the hard hat one is still a phenomenal resource for you to get started. However, this one has a ton of advancements in it, making it the most cutting edge Web3 developer course, period. Having done one of these videos every year for the past three years, I've been reached out to by countless developers who are now full time developers in the Web3 space, making a living, doing well and contributing to Web3. And there are thousands that I have not met who have left comments or left me notes. And I know we're going to do it again with this video. If you're looking to become a Web3 Solidity smart contract or blockchain developer or any of those terms, this is the course for you. And this course is for anybody and everybody, no matter your blockchain or developer experience level. And additionally, we're going to be using artificial intelligence to accelerate our learning progress. And I'm going to teach you not only how to become a blockchain developer, but how to work with AI tools to make you a 10x developer. If you have a little bit of developer experience before this, this course will be even easier to get through. But again, don't worry if you've never coded before. And for those of you who are already familiar with blockchain and smart contract development, feel free to jump around the different modules and different sections and grab the learnings that you want. I promise there's a lot of cutting edge information in here and maybe you need to brush up. So no matter if you're brand new to coding, brand new to blockchain, or you're an experienced smart contract engineer, you're in the right place. Welcome to the edge of the rabbit hole. Let's get froggy. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Patrick Collins. I'm a smart contract engineer, security researcher, and just lover of all things Web3. I'm one of the co-founders of the smart contract auditing firm, Cyphern, average smart contract YouTuber, co-creator of web3education.dev, and I live and breathe smart contract development. I absolutely love Web3, blockchain and smart contracts, and I love the power and the tools that they enable us to use. But not only that, I love taking blockchain developers like yourself watching this video right now on the journey to becoming a successful smart contract developer. I think the key to Web3, to blockchain, to cryptocurrencies being successful is having a phenomenal foundation of developers. So I'm incredibly excited that you're here with me. And for those of you who don't want to become blockchain developers, the first two lessons of this course, lesson zero and lesson one, are foundational pieces of conceptual information for you just to understand how to get into this Web3 thing. So if you don't want to become a developer, just stop once we get to the coding. For my Pythonistas here, I'm working on an edition of this course purely in Python and Viper. Stay tuned for that as well. In any case, I'm incredibly excited for your journey. This is a data dump passion project of all the knowledge that I've collected over the past few years of working in this industry and being a smart contract developer myself. And at this point, I have the track record to show that I am 100% confident that if you follow along, if you code along with us, if you follow me on this journey, you will come out the other side armed with the knowledge to be a positive force for the cryptocurrency and blockchain industry. Smart contract and Solidity developers are massively in demand with an average salary being around $145,000 a year. And with AI coming in place, it's becoming even easier to get up to speed quickly. But only those that understand the technology truly will be able to take advantage of all these advancements. AIs get stuff wrong a lot. So we especially need the knowledge to fact check whenever AIs get things wrong. Being here, you have the opportunity to be a pioneer, ushering in the age of Web3 of cryptocurrency, blazing the trail of where this phenomenal industry has yet to go. Like I said, this isn't the first time we've done this. We've already helped so many developers get into space, and we're gonna give you the cutting edge, most modern tools for industries like DeFi, NFTs, DAOs, tokens, upgradable smart contracts, blockchains, and everything else that you can think of. Once you finish this course, it will be abundantly clear what you want your next steps to be. And you'll have a ton of economic opportunity at your fingertips and opportunities to make a huge difference in this amazing industry. However, I can't just give it to you. You have to come with me on this journey. You have to take the step. Despite what you might think you know, cryptocurrencies and smart contracts 
Enable a more accountable world, a more transparent world, a more collaborative world, a world where promises can't be broken. And that's a world that I want to live in. We'll learn more about the purpose of smart contracts and the purpose of blockchain technology in lesson one of this course. And then, of course, we'll teach you how to build it. So before we even get started, I want to give you a huge thank you for even being here on this video and listening and being interested in engaging in this phenomenal technology. So thank you for being here and welcome to the rabbit hole because we're about to drop down. With that being said, let's get froggy. So let's begin our journey by talking about some best practices. That way you can get the absolute most out of this course and be as effective as possible. Now there are two links in the description that I want you to pause the video right now, go into the description and click on and open up. The first one is web3education.dev, and the second one is a GitHub link to a repo, also known as a repository, with all the code and all the lessons and everything we're going to be covering in this video. The web3education.dev site is an education site that we're working on to have all of this video and everything else and all the cutting edge learnings of blockchain developers in this course, in this site. So if you enjoy written context as well, be sure to subscribe to sign up for that so that you can be one of the first people to know when it launches. And the second site is this GitHub link. This is going to be your Bible for the duration of watching this video. It has everything that we're going to go over. It has all the code, context, text, etc., that you're going to need to be successful in this video. And I'm going to be referring to it pretty often as we go through the course. Additionally, in this GitHub, there's a discussions tab right here that you can click on. And in here is where you can ask questions, discuss with other people taking the course, interact with members helping out, and it's where you can discuss anything that you're having trouble with. And an important note, sometimes you'll see this as the Chain Excel Org Foundry Flow course. We recently renamed it to the Cypheron Foundry Flow course. So this is the correct link, but if you see Chain Excel Org, that's fine as well. That being said, as we go through this course, we're also gonna teach you some best practices on working with artificial intelligence how to best prompt these AI so that they can give you the best results. Just keep in mind, they sometimes get things wrong. And it's a good idea if you are gonna use an AI to fact check it with a human or another resource. So be sure to say hi in the discussions and maybe meet some like-minded peers. And additionally, once we do get to the coding portion of this course, it's a good idea to code along with me as I'm explaining things. So having the video up as well as your coding screen is a good idea so you can follow along with me as I'm explaining it. Now, this space moves incredibly quickly. So whenever I open some documentation or some code base or something, I highly recommend that you open it as well in your browser, just so that you can know immediately right away that the code that I'm working with in the video is gonna be the same that the code that you're working with locally. Now we're going to be keeping all of the code in here up to date, but sometimes things change and something that I do in the video might not be the most up to date best practice. So we're going to have this file called chronological updates.md where you can go in and check to make sure that you're working on the most up to date edition. So if you go into that file, each lesson will have a section. And if there's some update that we made to the lesson, you can find it in there. Additionally, if you think you found something that is different or doesn't quite work, be sure to make a discussion for it in that GitHub repo. Like I said, it's going to be your Bible. But yes, if you run into an issue, make sure that file is one of the first places that you check just to make sure that all the code that you're working with is the most up to date. All of this is to say, if you run into an issue, jump to that GitHub repo and make a discussion. We will also be giving you some tips very soon about how to best make a discussion. Yes, asking questions to other human beings is a skill. And we're going to try to teach you to be the most effective because asking well formatted questions is not only the secret to being a fantastic AI prompt engineer, but also becoming an incredibly successful developer. We're going to learn how to ask well formatted questions. And whenever we post on discussions or forums or whatever, we're going to work on formatting them as best as possible. Take breaks. I cannot tell you how many people have tried to rush through these courses and be like, oh, I'm going to finish in a single weekend. Your brain doesn't work like that. Your brain needs time to absorb the information. So take breaks, maybe every 25 minutes to a half hour, take a five minute break. Or maybe you like working in longer chunks. Maybe take a whole hour and then take a 15, 20 minute break. Don't try to rush through the whole video in a day. You're not going to retain the information. Go outside, go for a walk, grab some ice cream, get some coffee, go to the gym. Your brain needs time to have the information Settle. Maybe every two hours, just step away. Maybe be done for the day. Work at whatever pace makes sense for you. 
everyone's going to have a different learning pace. There is no right speed for this course. I've had people take my courses in two weeks, in three months, in six months. It doesn't matter. Pick a pace that you can do and stick to it. Not only work at your pace, make sure that I'm talking at a pace that makes sense for you. There's a little gear icon in the YouTube video here where you can change the speed of how I'm talking and how fast the video is going. So if I'm talking way too fast for you, then you can slow me down. But if I'm talking too slow, then you can speed me up. So make the adjustments you need to make me go the speed you want me to go. Now, a giant video like this can be kind of hard to triage where you left off. So using the GitHub repo with the timestamps in there is a good way to say, ah, okay, I was on lesson one. Let's click the link there to jump right to the timestamp. If you pause a video in YouTube, you can actually right click and say, copy at current time and maybe drop that into a notes folder somewhere so that you can always just pick right back up where you left off. Or like I said, you can use some of the timestamps in the GitHub repo associated with this course. Or depending on when you watch this, the web3education.dev site might also be up. Be sure to check that out as well. And of course, this course is modular. So you can bounce around topic to topic and go to where you want to go. If you don't want to do any full stack stuff, then skip that section. If you want to go right to the advanced stuff, do that. Like I said, go the pace and take the learnings that you want to do. And after every lesson, it might be a good idea to go back and reflect on each lesson to really make sure the knowledge gets ingrained. Repetition is the mother of skill. And we're going to be repeating a lot of smart contract development. Now, additionally, at the end of every lesson, you'll see a little QR code that looks something like this. And there will be a link in the GitHub repo pointing to the same place that this QR code is pointing to. These are optional challenges that you can do to try to make sure that you actually learned what was meant to be learned here. And if you do solve them, you get a very cool NFT along with it. Don't know what an NFT is? Don't worry, we'll teach you later. Blockchain development and open source development world is incredibly collaborative. So be sure to use tools like, of course, the GitHub discussions tab, Ethereum Stack Exchange, the decentralized Q&A forum, Piranha, issues on different GitHubs, artificial intelligence, and more. And like I said, we'll give you more tips on how to most effectively use these sites in the future. And the reason I'm putting so much emphasis on this and that I will continue to put so much emphasis on this is being a successful smart contract developer is more than just knowing how Solidity works. Knowing where to go for information and how to collaborate with people is often more important than your smart contract knowledge because oftentimes you're gonna run into issues you don't know how to solve. So we're gonna teach you to unblock yourself on this and really anything in life. Plus, syncing with other people in the space makes it way more fun. Now, before we can actually get to coding, we need to understand how the blockchain even works, what the purpose of these smart contracts even are. And this is essential to becoming a successful smart contract developer because a technology is really just a solution. And a solution is only as good as the problem is. So we need to make sure we understand the problem really well so we know how to attack it with this smart contract technology. And the better you understand the smart contract technology, the better you'll be able to architect your smart contracts in the future and make really intelligent, really powerful systems that further this amazing industry. But if you already know the basics of blockchain, feel free to jump into lesson two and skip over lesson one. So those are some of the best practices to be really successful with this course. But with that knowledge, you're now standing at the edge of the rabbit hole. And if you're like me, once you jump in, you'll just wanna keep going deeper and deeper. I'm so excited for you to embark on this journey with us. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the other side, just like the thousands of other developers who have taken these courses and have emerged the other side triumphant. So it all starts with blockchain basics. Let's get froggy.